Hi, I'm Stefan Papadakis. I'm all alone at our race shop here in Carson, California, and wanted to learn something new and see something I've never seen before. So what we're going to do is pull the turbocharger off of our new Supra build and take the turbocharger all the way apart and see how it works inside. If you want to see more on the engine or car build, I'll link to those videos in the description down below. But for now, let's get this turbocharger off. So a turbocharger is essentially just an air pump. It forces extra air into the engine with boost pressure, and that pump that forces the air into the engine is powered from the exhaust system. And there's two sides to it, the cold side and the hot side of the turbocharger. The cold side pulls air in from the atmosphere, pressurizes it through the compressor. When you pressurize the air, the temperature goes up. The air then goes through an intercooler, which then cools it down again, and then into the engine. So I'll start by pulling off the air filter, both of the intercooler pipes, and our nitrous. If you've ever heard of a 150 horsepower kit or a 200 horsepower nitrous kit, they're based on these small little jets and the size of the hole that's drilled in them, which regulates the amount of nitrous that's injected into the engine. Turbochargers will need a moment to spool up and create that boost, especially large turbochargers that have a lot of horsepower capacity. So that's one of the reasons we'll use nitrous is for that low end power at let's say 2,500 RPM to where the turbocharger doesn't have enough energy yet to spin up and make the boost at that low RPM. If you look down into the intake pipe, you can see the nitrous fogger, and that's where it injects the nitrous into the intake stream. We also have an air intake temperature sensor on the intake pipe. Next, I'll remove the line to the blow-off valve, and this is the recirculating type blow-off valve to where instead of it blowing off into the atmosphere, it blows off just in front of the compressor wheel, and I'll show you that later when we get the turbocharger more apart. These plugs are for the turbo speed sensor and the boost control valve. I'll disconnect the oil feed line and then cap all the AN fittings with these little caps. That way when we pull everything apart, we don't damage some of the fittings and also we can plug up the lines so they don't leak any oil. Next, we'll remove the turbocharger oil return line. We've got to get under the car to get to that. I'm really a fan of this aluminum jack. It's less than half the weight of the normal steel jack, so it's easier to move around the shop and it doesn't flex like you'd think an aluminum jack would. And here's a pro tip. Once I get the car down on the jack stands, I won't lower the jack all the way, just enough to get it back from underneath the car. That way when I put it back under the car to get it back off the jack stands, I don't have to pump it all the way up from the lowest level. The oiling system on the turbocharger is pretty simple. High pressure oil goes in the top, it gravity drains through to the bottom and right back into the oil pan. This engine is quite unique where it's a six cylinder, but it only has two exhaust ports. And that's been nice because it makes the turbo header much simpler. Now with the header and turbocharger off, we can start pulling it all apart. Before we move on, I wanna show you this really cool Bluetooth speaker we've been using at the shop. It's called the Cove Commuter 2. It's a Bluetooth speaker that has the ability to split into two. So you can either have it as a single with 360 degree sound or split it to two and then you have stereo sound. And I can move this really easily from the shop to the engine building room and even to the office and I'll connect it to my laptop and I can even use it for editing some of the videos. It's really easy to charge because it's got one cable that splits into two so it charges both of them at the same time. And a pro tip here, if you want to check the battery of any of your Bluetooth items, if you slide over on your home screen on your iPhone, it'll not only show you the battery of your iPhone, but the battery of any Bluetooth connected devices. So if you want to buy one of these, I've got a link to the Cove website in the description down below. And if you use the code PAPA60, you'll get over a 60% discount on the commuter too. Let's get the turbocharger off of the turbo manifold. And I found the best wrenches to use are these Snap-on Flank Drive Plus wrenches. Normally I don't like these open end wrenches because the serrations leave marks on all of the nuts. And I like my nuts to look like they haven't been tampered with. But in something like this where you need to put a lot of torque to either tighten it or loosen it, there's a really good application for these wrenches. In order to make sure that the hardware doesn't fall off the turbocharger, we use these really trick wedge lock washers. The washers have a serrated side that engage into the contact surface of the nut. The inside of the washer has a cam system that as you tighten it, the wedge locking effect prevents any loosening of the fastener. This is the turbo speed sensor. It measures speed off of the compressor wheel blades. The speed of this turbocharger is over 100,000 RPM, which is why the balance of these wheels and the bearing cartridge we're gonna to get to later is really important for reliability on a turbocharger. So the blow-off valve is comprised of the cap, a spring, and the valve. At normal boost, this is closed, but when the turbo's at boost, flowing all of this air, and you let off the throttle, it closes the throttle blade, and all this air in the turbocharger has nowhere to go. That's what the bypass blow-off valve is for. It'll open up and release that pressure and allow it to bypass and not surge the turbocharger. So if you ever heard the turbocharger do something like, Choo -choo 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 -choo. That's actually the turbo compressor stopping and starting and slowing down and that compressed air coming back out the inlet. A more normal sound would be like a psh, psh sound. That's the sound of the turbocharger air being released and not surging the turbocharger. 
The compressor housing comes off with just this one clamp, and now you can see the whole compressor wheel. This turbocharger is called an EFR9280. This compressor wheel is CNC'd out of aluminum and then anodized black. The green paint is on there for part of the balancing process. Now it's time to take off the turbine housing. Once that's removed, you can see the turbine wheel. This is where the exhaust actually flows through. It flows in these two ports, spins the wheel, and exits through the downpipe and out the exhaust. This is where the energy comes from to spin up a turbocharger. This is the difference between a turbocharger and a supercharger. Both a supercharger and a turbocharger have compressors, but a turbocharger, the compressor is spun from the exhaust energy, but on a supercharger, the compressor is spun from a belt connected to the crankshaft of the engine. Now we're into the part that I've never seen inside of a turbocharger. The compressor wheel comes off quite easily. It's a left-hand nut, so you turn it clockwise to unscrew it, and the compressor wheel just slides right off. They really want all of the rotating assembly in this turbocharger to be as light as possible because the lighter it is, the quicker it can spin up and the faster your spool up is for the turbo boost. So this insert is what separates the oiled section on the inside from our compressor wheel. The inside of this is the shaft oil seal, which has a couple of piston rings on it that stop oil from coming through. So we've got one more snap ring to take off, but the turbine shaft won't come out. And I'm trying to remember back when I had some instruction from the Borg Warner guy how to take this apart, and I'm pretty sure he didn't say hammer it. Pretty quickly I realized that was not the way to do it. So it seemed like the turbo shaft was pressed in there some way and brought it over to the press to press out the turbine shaft. And this is always scary because hopefully I didn't forget anything. But after a couple pumps, it broke free and started sliding out. That was definitely a sigh of relief. Now that I've been able to get the turbine wheel out, we can get the bearing cartridge out. And this is a ceramic ball bearing cartridge. This is basically the highest end turbochargers that they make now. And that's it. Turbocharger is relatively simple. There's not a lot of components to it, but the quality, the balancing, and the design of it is really important because these things spin so high and they go through so many transitions between low RPM and high RPM. And these have come a long way in the last 20 years since I've been using them. They're so reliable now compared to turbochargers of the past. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more stuff like this, please consider subscribing. I've got a bit of time here at the shop, so I'm going to keep trying to find stuff to take apart and film. And if you want to see that stuff, then stay tuned. Thanks. See you later.